Go ahead, Greg. So Taz, is it as simple as when you guys see one shot start to go, they, they all just come in quick succession? Confidence of the team just explode at that point? How, how can you explain it? Well, I think we did a good job of turning our defense to quick offense and getting our getting shots to players that need to see a shot go in. Like Sean was really feeling it, and we were just picking up our defensive pressure and intensity. And once we felt that, our offense was taking care of itself. You know, we seen one go in, second one go in, then that boosts our defense, and then vice versa. So I think our defense was the main catalyst of us and uh, the creation of our offense. Next is Cody Nesper. Hey, Taz, just um, since the end of the game on Friday, what did you guys do to prepare for this game? Uh, we knew they had really quick guards, and they had good defensive guards as well, and bigs who can really pass it. So we were just trying to focus on ball pressure uh, and making them play our type of game and not theirs, speed them up a little bit, try to give them an impress a little bit, and just run on offense. Uh, once we ran out of offense and got easy points on fast breaks, I think that's what, like, opened the lead as you know as much as it did because I feel like we can use our athleticism a little more to get out and get quick buckets because you don't really want to just fight for every point you uh or every, every point that you can get so yeah we was mainly just taking things away from them making everything difficult forcing back cuts and forcing our help to rotate and we was just just trying to get them to play our game instead of theirs we'll go to Justin Jackson Hey, Taz, uh, you, you kind of mentioned that uh, turning defense and offense, uh, you guys sort of did that uh, to begin the second half against North Texas as well with that full court press. And um, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, Coach Huggins the other day said that that press is basically just kind of designed to slow the other teams down. But, uh, you know, this is the second game in a row where you guys have actually turned some turnovers in, into some, you know, transition layups and things like that. Um, just kind of talk about that press and, and what it does for you and, you know, the fact that you just kind of break it out in, in spots. Uh, uh, what, what does that do for you guys? Well, just to have the ability to change up our defense and um, <clears throat> instead of going to a straight man-to-man, -man, you know, up the line, forcing passes away from the basket type of thing, we uh, – to the ability to have a different defense you can go to to speed people up and just to get them uncomfortable – you know, that's a, it's a great feeling. And we're not pressed with Virginia by any means. You know, they had a different team just like us. and But we have good athletes. So I think we can speed people up, get a couple of steals here and there, get out on a fast break. But that's mainly just to slow people down and just to get them to, like, 18, 15 seconds on the shot clock to run their half-court offense. And that's what we're trying to do. Evan Kinder. Taz, a little bit more on that pressure. When you start getting that, though, and you see you're taking them away of things that they normally do, did you sense some frustration there? Because, you know, there was a three or four-minute stretch where they couldn't really do anything at all with the ball. And secondly, did you see anything particular in the way they run their offense that you all felt like you could take away and attack? Well, there – I feel like us seeing them we, – we've seen them frustrated. We've seen, like, them kind of struggle a little bit because as a basketball player – you know how frustrating it is when you get pressed and you just it's just turn over and turn over, you know. So uh, our main thing on defense was to just take the reversal pass uh, up top to their big man away because he initiates their offense and then they go into this jungle action where it's just cuts after cut and multiple actions, ten actions and just slips and so the the big man created all that at the top of the at the top of the key. So our focus was just to make sure he catches the ball away from the basket as much as he possibly could, so he couldn't throw those back cuts a lot, even though he got. I think a couple of assists off of them. And uh, we was just trying to focus on that and make sure those quick little guards didn't get into the, the lane as much uh, as they did other games and just contain their shooters. Greg Hunter. So, Tez, when, when you guys don't make shots and you hear people say, boy, if they could just make shots, do you guys take that personal? How, how do you put that behind you and, and try to keep your confidence level? I don't, I don't take anything that people say personal to me. Uh, that's just basketball. It's just the world we live in, this sport. You know, that's that's going to happen. But we have other ways of scoring and other ways of dominating the game. Of course, like West Virginia has a, a big culture around defense. So we can dominate the game without shooting the ball very well. But when we do shoot the ball very well, I think we're a very good team. And even though we got to pick up a lot of things defensively, getting our sets offensively faster, uh, once we make shots like today, I, I don't know where our three-point percentage was, but I looked up and it was like, it was around like 40%, 50% at one point. 
And once we start having people to uh, – forcing people to respect our jump shots, they can't double off of DC and Oscar and Isaiah and Gabe as much because we're going to end up making shots. So the ability to make shots is opening up everything that we, that we do in the offense. Back to Justin. Hey, Kaz. Um, you guys are obviously on a pretty good roll here. Um, team's probably going to move up into the top ten this week in the, in the national polls. Uh, you guys at a point last year were kind of in a very similar spot, you know, where the team's moving up the rankings and, and all this and that, and then had some struggles. A, a year later now, uh, how is this team different and maybe more – um, able or, or capable of handling uh, the, the success? Well, I feel like just like last year, we had good leaders last year, Jermaine, Haley, and Chase, and, and Mozzie, of course. But this year, I feel like we have a, 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 a older group since the people of last year, like Jordan and Emmett, like they're all juniors now. They're, so they've been playing college basketball for three years now. So we have a, a good group of older guys, and we have a good group of young guys who just like to uh, learn and we just look forward to the next game and just think about the game that we have at the moment. And the, only, the big difference, I think, from last year is we have a, such a complete team. So when things don't go right for one player, coaching is just throwing another player and just getting probably the same production, you know. Uh, even though we don't play all 13 guys right now, we have the ability to play all 13 if we really needed to. And I feel like that's what separates us from last year. Anything else for Taz? Okay, Taz, thank, appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you.